Hey guys, um, and we're going to start chapter 8 today, and we're going to start off um, with what's actually going to be kind of review for us, because our book introduces the idea of solving right triangles at the beginning of chapter 8, which is good because chapter 8 is really about solving non-right triangles, so you have to start with what you know before you can do what you don't know, um, but we've already did this because I did this at the beginning of the year, so a lot of this is going to be review, um, solving right triangles. That's where I'm going to give you three pieces of information. So a side, knowing that angle, knowing this angle down here, and then we're going to find three pieces of unknown information. Um, again, having a right triangle, if you know two sides, you can always find the third side uh, using the Pythagorean theorem. Um, knowing this is a right angle means that these two angles always have to add up to 90. So once you know one of them, you're always going to know the other one. Um, and if you don't have either two sides or two angles, then you can make a connection using the trig functions um, to make connections between sides and angles. So like I said, we already did this. This right here, um, the first thing I would do on this triangle is if you know an angle, I would automatically find that that third angle. So I would say that angle B is 50, so there's one of the things we're supposed to find. Um, and then I would find A or C. You could use this 50 degree angle, um, but I always try to use the given information because I know these two numbers are right because they're the numbers that they gave us. So what I would do is I would probably make a connection between this angle this side and this side, and I would find side A. So I would say, well, this is the opposite of this angle. This is the adjacent. So this is a tangent problem. So the tangent of 40 equals A over 2. Um, this is a nice, simple little cross multiplying, right? We're going to be using calculators in this, in this chapter. So I would take the tangent. I'm going to make sure my calculator is in degree mode. Um, take the tangent of 40, multiply by 2, and 1.68, we'll say. So side A is 1.68. And now that you know this side, you could use the Pythagorean theorem to find C. You could do 1.68 squared plus 2 squared and take the square root of that. Um, but again, if the 1.68 is wrong, then our side C is going to be wrong. So what I would probably do is I would use the 40 and the 2 to find C. I would say this is the hypotenuse, this is the adjacent, so that's a cosine problem. The cosine of 40 is adjacent over our hypotenuse. I would cross multiply with the C to move it up here, and then I would divide by the cosine of 40. So in your calculator, what you're going to do is you're going to take 2, divided by the cosine of 40, and there's my last side, 2.6. That's fine. 2.6, 2.61, yeah. However you want to do it. And we've solved that triangle. That's it, okay? Um, the only trick on B, um, this one, I know three. So what I would probably do is I'd probably find, si find side C right off the bat. If they gave me two sides, I'm going to do 3 squared plus 2 squared. Um, that's going to be 13. And then I'm going to take the square root of 13. So square root of 13. Did I do that right? Yep. And that's 3.6. So this is 3.6. Um, and then I would find either A or B, and I would probably find B, and I would set up a tangent problem. Again, I'm going to use the 2 and the 3 because they were given to us, just in case my 3.6 is wrong. So I'm going to say the tangent of B is 2 thirds, which means B is the inverse tangent of 2 thirds. Um, so B is, so again, my calculator, I'm going to do clear. I'm going to do second tangent, so that's the inverse tangent, of 2 divided by 3. And I'm going to get 33.7. Looks good. 33.7. And then if I subtract 90 from that, 
Well, that would this is the positive version of this is what I would get if you took 90 minus that angle. So that's just a little computer or calculator trick that I can do so I don't have to retype everything. But that's it. I solved that triangle. Okay. Now, um, one thing I talked about a little bit um, at the beginning of the year, we talked about perspective and how you change uh, between these two angles, your perspective changes. Like what is the opposite is now the adjacent, and what was the adjacent is now the opposite, that sort of thing. Okay, so like if I look at angle A, the sine of angle A is A over C. But what is A over C in um, if you're looking at angle B? So if I'm looking at angle B, A over C, that's the adjacent and that's my hypotenuse, so that's the cosine. So the sine of A is equal to the cosine of B. Okay. Um, how about this one? What's the cosine of A? The cosine of A would be B over C. But what is that as far as B is concerned? What is that relationship? Well, B over C, that's the opposite, that's the hypotenuse, so that's the sine. Okay. What about tangent? What's the tangent of A? Well, there's A. The tangent would be the opposite over the adjacent. So opposite over the adjacent. But what is that in regards to angle B? So if I was at angle B, and I'm looking at A over B. So that's the adjacent, and that's the opposite. And that's the cotangent. All right. So what we do is we find out that there's a theorem that's going on here. And we find that the function of any angle, so like the sine of A, is equal to the cosine of B. Well, sine and cosine have a special name. They're called cofunctions. Why? Because that's the word sine, and that is the cosine. They're called cofunctions. Okay? Secant and cosecant are cofunctions, and tangent and cotangent are cofunctions. And what it is, if you have two angles that are complementary, so they add up to 90, their cofunctions are equal. So the sine of A is equal to the cosine of B. The secant of A is equal to the cosecant of B. Um, the tangent of A is equal to the cotangent of B. That's all this is saying, okay? Um, so down on the bottom, I can use this idea. So like right here, it says, what is the tangent of 12 minus the cotangent of 78? Well, notice that 12 and 78 add up to 90. And so what I could do is I could rewrite the tangent of 12 as its co-function. So I could rewrite tangent as cotangent. I could rewrite 12 as its complementary angle, which is 78. And now I have... oops. What is the cotangent of 78 minus the cotangent of 78? Well, we're not going to plug that in our calculator. We just know that if you subtract anything from itself, you're going to get zero, and that's all you're doing. You're making a connection using these cofunctions um, to simplify this, like this one. What is the cosine of 40 divided by the sine of 50? Well, again, these two angles add up to 90. So I could rewrite cosine as its cofunction, which is sine, I could rewrite 40 as its complementary angle, which is 50, and now I've turned this problem into the sine of 50 over the sine of 50, which is 1. Okay, so just kind of a silly little trick that we can do. This one's a little bit trickier um, because you have to recognize this as a Pythagorean identity. 1 plus tangent squared is equal to secant squared. And now secant and cosecant those would be cofunctions. 5 and 85, those are complementary angles. So I could rewrite either one of these. I could rewrite secant as cosecant. I could rewrite 5 as 85. And now I've got the cosecant of 85 minus the cosecant of 85, which is going to be 0. Okay? All right, and then on the back page, something else we're going to be doing um, in this chapter is we're going to be dealing with a lot of application problems. We'll start with right triangle trig, because that's what we're familiar with and what we know. Um, and some of the problems are going to be very straightforward. Okay, so like this problem right here, you're given a right triangle, 
if you read through the problem, you're given information. Um, this has to do with, it's an instrument called a salometer. The clouds, where the clouds start, that's called the ceiling. Um, I had a roommate who was a pilot, and so that was one of the words they would use. They talk about, you know, where's the cloud ceiling um, at. So this is a tool, an instrument that'll measure that. So if you read through the problem, it says that these two pieces of equipment are 300 feet apart from each other. We know the angle of elevation looking up to the bottom of the cloud is 75 degrees, and we're trying to figure out the height of the cloud. So again, trying to find the opposite side, knowing the adjacent side, this is going to be a tangent problem. Uh, you are going to plug that in your calculator, and you're going to do this in all of about 30 seconds. Uh, tangent of 75 times 300, and we're going to get the height of 1,100. Now, the direction state around to the nearest foot, so if you want to go ahead and round that to 1,120, that would be perfect. If you keep a decimal, I don't care. I'm not going to yell at you, okay? All right, but some of the questions are a little bit um, not quite as straightforward as that one. So if you look at this last one here, um, we have a blimp, and it's 500 feet above the ground. Um, this is Soldier Field. This is where the Chicago Bears play. Um, so we're up in Chicago. This is Soldier Field. This is Adler Planetarium, and they're giving us some angles of depression. So we're up in the blimp, and we're looking down at these things, Okay. So the angle of depression to Soldier Field is 32, which means this angle of elevation would also be 32. Remember, that's where we want the number to be. Um, this angle of depression is 23, which means this is also 23. And they're wanting us to find this total distance right here. Well, we don't know how to do that yet. This entire side, if you look at this, if you look at this triangle as a whole, this is not a right triangle. We don't know how to do non-right triangles. So what we're going to, have to do is we're going to have to break this down. Now, we will be able to, but just not yet. So we're going to have to break this into two triangles. So let's find this, side A, and then we'll find this over here, this part, B, and then we'll just add those two together, and then we'll know the total distance. Okay? So if you look at A, I know this angle. I know this side is 500, so this would be a tangent problem. The tangent of 32 is 500 over A. That'll get us A. And then we'll look over here and we'll say, well, the tangent of 23 equals 500 over B. We'll plug both these into our calculator and then we'll just add those two values together. So like I said, pretty straightforward. Go ahead and do that real quick. Um, and then I'll do it as well and show you the answer. All right, so this is what you should have got. So again, with this setup, how you do this in your calculator, you take 500 and divide it by the tangent of 32. Okay, the A moves up next to the tangent of 32, and so we have to divide by the tangent of 32. So this is what I found for A. I had to do the same thing for B. And then those two individual pieces together would give us our total distance of 1,978.1, or you could round that to a whole number, and I'm fine with that. Okay? So take a look at your worksheet, and let me know if you have any questions.